Excel cubed allows multiple report selections and filtering choices from the standard member selector. From here, we can select one or multiple items and then choose related sets of members. In this video, we're going to look at how we can also use a range of cells or slices to choose members to enable more dynamic selections on Excel cubed objects. Excel cubed allows you to define a range that contains the data you want to look at. Single cells to whole columns can be selected within the member selector here. This is particularly useful for power users and analysts who know the data very well. It is possible to use all the normal Excel cube related set selections, though for now we will just use the cells themselves. This method of selection is not limited to filters, but can be used in any part of an Excel cube grid. I can move the products down to rows and change the selection from the members in the cell to its descendants. And now I will see all members that are below my selection in the cube appear in my grid. The selection range can be stored on a separate sheet within the workbook. This means you can have multiple grids driven by a single range across different sheets enabling you to build more coherent reports. The range picker is a very useful tool if you know the data or copy paste lists of members into your workbook to drive your grids. However, sometimes it is best to present the user with a list of available members to choose from. Slicers can do just that. To add a slicer, right click on the individual member and select add slicer from the Excel cube menu. I now have an in-cell tree view where I can navigate and pick any member I want. By default, the tree view allows you to navigate to the very bottom level of the hierarchy. Slicers are fully connected to the cube. This means the member list will change with the underlying cube, so any additional members will be automatically available for selection in this dropdown. We can easily move and resize the slicer so I can move it away from the grid and it will not lose any functionality. If we right click and select edit, we can take a look at some of the options available. Here we can change the slicer type. A later video will cover the different types available. Regardless of which slicer type you choose, the behavior tab will present you with a number of settings relevant to the type you are using. Firstly, I can choose whether to enable the ability to select multiple items in my slicer. One slicer can directly drive several grids and charts by being used in the member selector where all available slicers for the hierarchy in question are displayed here. Choose one and then it functions in the same way as XR ranges we saw before and has the same related set selection possibilities. However, I can also choose to update a particular Excel range with the selections I make in my slicer. This can then be used by the range picker shown at the start of the video to drive other Excel cubed objects. Here, I will choose to put the slicer selection in the cells in column I, and then say we want to output the caption. If multi-select is enabled, the range must contain enough cells for each selection. Lastly, we can set up tree view slicers, so they will stop at a particular level. So let's limit this one to the subcategory level. If we go to the appearance tab, we can give the slicer a name and also choose to either show that name or a title from an Excel cell range in the bar for the slicer. We'll call this slicer product. So as you can see, the tree view behaves exactly as before and updates the grid as expected. Our slicer has a title of product and you can also see that when we reach the subcategory level, there are no more options to drill down. Column I has been populated with our selections. I could now use the slicer output to drive formula reports or SQL statements contained elsewhere within the workbook. The next video will cover formula reports.